Yeah, I'd heard a story once when you said growing up you were watching Michael jo Jordan on ESPN with his dunks. And now players don't seem to shoot as well. They don't have the mechanics down like they did. And you think that seeing that people became in love with the dunk, they lost their, they, the willingness to practice shooting. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, but how can you not? You know, like I, I understand and I don't blame young athletes for continuing to physically push the envelope. And you see Vince Carter doing things that he does. I mean, that that's great as a 15, 16, 17 year old, because you would love to do that. I mean, I mim I wanted to mimic Michael Jordan too, growing up in the backyard dunking. But I think the reality was also understood. My father was such a Larry Legend fan. You know what I mean? And that's and so I just remember him talking about how Larry could shoot and how Larry could make plays. And he wasn't this physically gifted athlete, but his IQ level was like off the charts. And Magic, obviously at Michigan State, another guy who wasn't a great athlete, you know, by any means, but you know, used other skill sets to to take himself to the other level. To me, we've settled into an era that. Um, the excitement of basketball has outweighed the appreciation for a skill set. And that's what I most appreciate about Del Curry and his son and all the things he's done uh, with promoting Steph to be what he is. And Steph is the guy that's changing the game back where people start to appreciate where, you know, you talk about MVPs of our league, normally MVPs, you look at it all throughout the history, those guys, something about them was extraordinary. Right? It was something physically extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Magic as a 6'9 point guard, Larry Bird as a you know, guy that could play four positions, um, uh, but still again, had tremendous size. Mm -hmm. LeBron with his physical presence. I mean, you can name them. Yeah. They don't look like Steph Curry, the past. He's, he's an average looking guy. He has average physical, you know, uh, it's not big. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing about him that blows you away. He looks like the average Joe walking around in the mm -hmm. street until he put the ball in his hands. And then you realize, like, this 6'3", six, 6'4", six, guard that isn't lightning quick, doesn't jump through the air past everybody, and, you know, and dunk it on people. He just does exactly what he does. And it's just amazing to watch stuff like that that has been developed in the gym for hours and just working and being consistent and yet still extremely humble, you know, and continues to work. That, that to me, is what's going to bring the game back to where all of us grew up watching throughout the late 70s, 80s, and 90s when we really saw people at, a, at every position sustain the basic skill levels of dribble, pass, and shoot. And, and hopefully that's just the savior for what the younger generation can watch and, and grow the game from. Kind of on that record, but aside, you see nowadays teams fouling play, certain players with three minutes to go in the third quarter. And they're just second the ball thrown in and foul this guy because he can't shoot free throws. Uh, do you see this trend as – going to be better for the younger players so they learn they have to learn the fundamentals this, or they're going to be made fun of? This this is what's crazy. Like, uh, we were just kind of playing around stuff. And, again, I just, well, I'll get the analytic guys to do okay. that stuff. How many guys are solid three-point shooters, which is, let's just say 35% and higher, yet struggle with free throw shooting now? Yeah. And yet, here we are as a team, struggle with three-point shooting, but we make free throws. Like, I don't know, I don't have an answer as to how that dynamic, but it seems to be more frequent that I've paid attention that somebody is a pretty good three-point shooter, but isn't up there in the top 75% of percentile of free throw shooting. And it's always one or the other, like, where – Good three point shooters were good. They would arguably be your best three point shooter. You were a shooter, period. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter what it was. Now it seems to be more localized, you know, one thing or the other. There's still people out there like that, but I just, for whatever reason, I know that throughout almost a decade now of being in the NBA coaching, I have seen more guys that you label as, hey, yes, and you got to find this guy, locate him on the three point line. But somewhere in that game, it's like, hey, go ahead and follow him because, you know, 
put them put them on the line. Yeah. You're like, mm. <laughs> didn't have, I don't think they would have put me on the line after being a three point shooter or guys that you quote unquote label as shooters. Mm-hmm. Do you think that the Steph Currys today are going to change the kids' perspective who are 15, 16, 17, make them work more on fundamentals? Because Curry is a three point shooter and he's a free throw shooter. You can't foul him. Right. I mean, first of all, I'm, throw it over his cor- over his shoulder when you foul him <laughs> right. and make it. <laughs> right, <laughs> which we've seen uh, a few we times. Wrap up soon. We're almost I'm done. So yeah. sorry, I didn't. Well, we, we just were chatting. <laughs> um, I think the thing that we see is um, it's the the trifecta of a shooter. Um, there are guys who can spot up, catch and shoot, and you know do it at a high level. Then there are guys who you know move all around screens and, and pins, and you know. All, uh, just play, you know, from from movement and who can shoot like that. Then there's guys off the dribble who can, you know, take it off the bounce, pick and roll actions and, you know, drags and shoot like that. Steph is one of the few guys I've ever experienced in my life that all three levels are pretty much the same. I mean, I was a great catch and shoot guy. I was, you know, just as good coming off the screens. But off the dribble, that was a little bit of a drop, you know, and you could have all kind of combination of guys you name. He's, he's the guy that I rarely have seen in my lifetime that all three levels are just as equally as high. And I think that's what's going to separate, you know, the next generation when they see him do it and realize how difficult it is that they really love the game, they really want to challenge themselves. That's what that time in that gym is going to be dedicated to. It's not going to just shoot threes and dunk, or shoot threes and dunk. I mean, they're going to learn how to shoot the mid-range jumper, you know, using a pick and roll because they can't get to the basket. They're going to have to learn how to, you know, give the ball up and move without the ball to find. And then they're going to have to allow somebody else to dominate the ball and run the floor and find a spot so the other guy can, you know, drive and kick to you. It, 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 that's what we're seeing in basketball now. This is the four out, one in, the five out, you know, mm-hmm. space to floor. It's where the game is going to, and hopefully that's – on top of what Steph has done with his individual success, but Golden State, San Antonio, Miami, these teams are allowing the game to really be opened up and and know that you you better have a premium on having the basic fundamentals of offense, uh, dribble, pass, and shoot if you're going to be successful with the way the game is going. Listen, I thank you so much. <laughs>